and welcome to my channel. my name is jennifer diamond and i live a whole food, plant exclusive, sofa's free, gluten free lifestyle for health and well being and i am feeling terrific today and so i thought i would bring you along to do a recipe and it's the curry potatoes samosas this recipe is found on page 385 out of the medical mediums brain saver protocols cleanses and recipes and i've never made um any kind of potato samosas before. So for me, this is gonna be brand new. And if you've ever made them and you have some tips, please feel free to leave a comment below and um, let me know. But for now, I prepped some of the stuff and I thought we could try it together. So the first thing it says here is we're gonna start with a pound of potatoes, which I cooked these little potatoes um, in the Instant Pot. And I just took the inside out of the Instant Pot. You can see right here, I had a little bit of water at the bottom and I washed these and I stuck this whole thing in there and I cooked it for a 15 minutes and then I just let natural, uh, just let the natural uh, release. So I'm gonna take these out now and I'm gonna grab another bowl Okay, so let me just see. So we've already got that. The first thing it tells you is um, to cook it in a medium pot or a steam basket over the stove, which I didn't do. I did the Instant Pot. Um, and so now we're just gonna mash them. I'm gonna leave all of the skin on. And I'm also doubling the recipe um, because I want to be able to have leftovers and hopefully my husband will want to eat this with me and so I'm going to go ahead and leave the skin on and these are let me show you what kind of potatoes I'm using but you could you could use any potato that you want I buy all different kinds of potatoes and this is what I have these are organic yellow potatoes and this particular uh, one just reminds me of the Yukon Gold, uh, but it isn't called that. This is what they had available at our local store. And so that's just a, another bag. But um, I had weighed these prior, and so I doubled everything. So I'm just going to start smashing it up. So I'm just going to use a potato masher, and I'm just going to kind of mash oh. them up. They're pretty soft. And the idea here is to mash it and then add a little bit of, um, well, what we're going to add to it is potato starch. And I have this one by Bob's Red Mill. It's a gluten-free potato starch. It's just what I had. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then we're going to create a, like a dough. Okay, I'm going to bring in some gloves because we're going to get messy. <laughs> and I'm going to measure, it says up to a cup but it's, it's also like a little bit less and we're just gonna kind of play it by ear. The idea is to get a texture that is kind of a dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit of the potato starch and it just says to like knead it until it's soft and smooth and so that's what I'm gonna do. Just make sure you can see this. Let me move this a little bit so you can really see what's going on here. Okay. Wow, that looks great to me. All right, so now I'm just going to set this aside, and I'm going to set this aside. I've got a, um, a pot or a pan. I'm going to go with this pot, ceramic pot, and I'm just going to heat it up. And I have already cut up uh, some onions. You can use any kind of onion. I already had part of a white onion. This is actually a sweet onion cut up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. But I could have also used a purple onion, um, and you could use really any onion. 
so i'm gonna add the onions and then cook for a little bit and then i also have some fresh ginger. we're gonna go ahead and start without any oil, right? we don't need oil to cook and then i'm gonna go ahead and add my onions my pre-chopped onions which is great and cook those for a few minutes and we're just softening the onions a little bit maybe a minute or so and then we're going to add the ginger next we're going to also add some spices to it so um, right here i have some um, granulated garlic and then some curry this particular curry and oh my gosh there are so many different curries i've learned this is um, a curry powder uh, that i got at savory spice shop in uh, northern california and but i have several to choose from i have a green powder uh, this is a salt free and so anyhow they are pre-measured ready to go in here also going to add some red pepper flakes and i'm just going to use what i have left in this container and then i'm going to add the uh, garlic and the curry and the crushed red bell pe uh, crushed uh, red pepper flakes now if you didn't want to use pepper flakes you can omit it and don't use anything if you don't like any spice you could also cut it down or you could use cayenne pepper which was a suggestion in the recipe i'm just using it up <laughs> okay and then i just want to stir this and kind of coat the onions a little bit with the seasonings and bring the seasonings um the notes out you know the smells the the, the uh, fragrance and and the flavor and then we're going to add some more to this it calls for potatoes and or cauliflower and i'm gonna actually turn this down um, for a minute and remove it off the heat because I didn't prep this ahead of time because I thought we would do it together. Um, it says you could either do cauliflower or more potatoes. I'm going to do both. So since we're doubling the recipe, I'm going to do half of, half and half. So basically you just take some cauliflower and then I'm just going to slice it up just like that. There you go. And let me do this one. It, it is always better and it is always easier if you have everything ready to go. You know, like the way that I'm kind of didn't, I had some stuff cut up and some stuff not cut up. It's just because I wanted to show you, you know, I didn't want everything to be ready because, you know, Maybe you want to see the reality of like what happens. How do you do stuff? Maybe you're new to cooking, not just this way, but cooking in general. So, um, but if you can do everything ahead of time and, you know, have it all laid out, then you can boom, 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 boom. It's sometimes easier that way too. So, um, this is close enough. I'm going to go ahead and put all this in to my pot and then I'm going to add a little extra potato so let me just go ahead and put this in there we go and I don't even need this extra piece so I'm going to go ahead and chop up some more potato and I'm again leaving the skin on you didn't want the skin on take the skin off um, and I'll show you how easy it is to take the skin off. You could literally use a spoon or your finger with this particular potato. Look, it just comes off and there you have a nice, nice smooth potato. So depending on your likings, you could do that. But you know, I'm just gonna use it all. I'm gonna chop just a little bit finer. So I, you know, haven't made this before like i said so don't really know exactly what to expect whoa but i'm going to go ahead and add kind of measure out oh yeah i think this is probably the same amount as the cauliflower so let's go add this to the pot i'm going to add some broth 
Now, they have a recipe for healing broth. You could use store-bought broth. I would just say check the broth and make sure that it doesn't have salt, oil, sugar, any preservatives, um, or you can make your own. And I happen to have some. I recently made some broth, and this was um, this is how I store it. And if you're interested in seeing how I made broth, I'll link the video below so you can click on that. Um, but this is um, a homemade veggie broth just made out of scraps that I had in the freezer that I had saved, and I already pre-measured this as a cup. So I don't need to measure it, that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm literally just gonna toss it in. Now I prefer broth um, because I like the added flavor that it gives. But if you didn't have broth, or for whatever reason you didn't wanna use it, go ahead and use water. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and Give this a stir. And I am um, actually, so if I need more, if I need more liquid than that, then I would add water to it. And um, this actually, because I am uh, doubling it, I, I didn't remember, but I, I, that's only half. So I am gonna put water, but if I don't have to, if I have the choice, I love to use the broth because it just gives it an extra oomph. And so let me go ahead and grab a little water from the Berkey. Okay, so I've got my water here. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. We're gonna let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And so we are also going to have some peas. now. Um, I went ahead and got fresh peas at, these are English peas that I got at our Trader Joe's. It says ready to use, uh, that they're washed and cleaned and you can steam them or microwave them. I'm going to go ahead and use these. You could use frozen peas. You could use any, any peas that you have on hand. And then we're also going to have some fresh cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can use parsley. If you don't like parsley or cilantro, leave it out. It's all good. So I love both, and so let me grab my container out of the refrigerator and we'll chop some up so we'll be ready. And this container I um, talk about in other videos, and um, it's just a wonderful container that I use for herbs, and I will link um, an Amazon link to it in case you're interested and you haven't heard me talk about it, but it's got an inside piece here, and then I keep fresh water in the bottom, you can probably see so that it, it kind of like well, keeps it like waters it like a plant. And this particular one has both some parsley and some cilantro. So I'm going to just use the cilantro right now. So let's just take some out and that'll probably be plenty. I use cilantro in smoothies, in salads, um, on sandwiches. You can just pretty much use it in stir fries, soups. I mean, herbs are wonderful. I am going to use the stems. Uh, if you don't like the stems, that's fine. I would just then suggest that you kind of cut these off here and make a little pile, and then you could chop it up. Um, you could chop it up with a regular knife, or you could use an herb knife, which is one that I have and use. So, but let me grab it. And see, just kind of chop, chop, chop. I like this herb knife because it uh, cuts down on how many chops you have to do, you know, because it's got, it's, fi it's like five scissors in one because you can see all of the different blades. And it's just another tool that helps. Um, and I think anything that can help us be more successful in what we're doing, especially when we're learning to cook a different way or even just to cook in general, um, if you can, you know, I think it's great. And you also don't need it to be successful. It's just, just something. All right. I will link the scissors uh, also in the notes in case you're interested in looking at, at this kind of a tool. And sometimes it does get a little bit stuck in there and I just kind of do my best to get it out. And there we have it. So we, I 
think are pretty much ready. And I'm gonna check on our cooking uh, insides over here. We're almost at 10 minutes. Looks good. Let me see if I can show you. But this time I am gonna wear these because it is hot. All right, so here we go. Let's see if you could see this. Hopefully you can. And so, yep, there it is. Now I am so fortunate because this this is like a first for me to uh, have a lemon tree that produce that has produced lemons this year. Oh my gosh! And here's the half of one of them. I picked this this morning and and I've used part of it already. And it, fresh is just amazing. If you uh, have a tree and you grow your own, wonderful. If you have uh, somebody that has an abundance. Um, don't let them go bad. You can, these will actually last a long time, but if you still don't think you'll use them, you can either squeeze out the juice and fill an ice cube tray and squeeze, uh, you know, freeze it and then um, seal it for later time. The ice cube trays that I use, they're about a tablespoon per little container, so I kind of already have it pre-measured. Um, but you can freeze a whole lemon or a whole uh, lime just how it comes, throw it in the freezer. And when it thaws, it is gonna have a different texture, but it keeps and it's fine. I also sometimes use this um, pure lemon juice. It's literally what it is. It's just lemon juice. And this is a Santa Cruz organic. I just get it at my local Sprouts. They sell them everywhere. And so depending on what you have or what you wanna use, um, that either one will do. So I'm gonna just measure that one out. Okay, so I think I'm just going to use what's in here and I'm going to save this for smoothies and on my salads and so forth. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this in here. All right, so that's ready and we'll just set it aside until we're ready. And it's been um, a little bit more time. I want to check this. And that's still still going strong. Uh, there's still plenty of liquid. But at this time, I'm going to go ahead and add the um, peas to it and let that kind of cook with it so that it'll be cooking together. Let's see. Now, the directions say to wait until it's pretty much almost like you just have a little liquid. And then you would add the peas the cilantro and the lime. I did it a little differently because my peas are raw. So I'm okay if they cook up a little bit more. Um, and I think that you don't wanna get them too cooked because uh, there is a potential for them to get mushy, but I'm okay with it. So um, we'll be back when that has cooked down and I'm gonna just sit over here and do some of the dishes in the meantime. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our dough and I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm going to start with half of the dough at a time. All right. And I'm going to dust the, the top of our surface here that we're going to be working with. So what's the reason for doing that, if you're not sure? Just so it won't stick. See, you just want to dust it a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove half of the dough and place it here. Now. I could use a rolling pin or a cup. Yes, you can use a cup. Um, and right now I'm not using either. I'm just kind of playing with it and see, I don't want it to stick. So I want to, and you don't want to over flour it either because then it, it can make it very dry. So this is definitely not a quarter of an inch thick. So I have um, a rolling pin I'm going to grab. I have several rolling pins. I always go to this one. I don't know why, but I'm just going to roll this out a little bit. It's kind of fun. It's almost like, kind of like baking. Reminds me of baking cookies, even though we're, we're baking with potato. And you could either do what I'm doing, move the tray and go this way, or you could pick it up and just turn it. Now I have found that if you start in the middle and you go towards you and then forward, 
um, that that is a really helpful way to do it. You could also not use more potato starch and you can use a piece of parchment paper on the bottom and the top. All right, this is the other way I would do it. <laughs> Make a ball and then just roll it towards me and roll it in front of me. There we go. Kind of just turn it, roll it this way, and this other way. I feel like some of this is a little too much at the end, and I'm just gonna, it's it's very forgiving, so I'm just replacing, you know, moving it. You could you can see what I did. I'll show you. There was a piece that was coming off here. I just cut it and moved it over here. And it's very forgiving. And look at it. It seems to be working better this way. So for me, then, next time, I would just start with this way. But just some different ways to do it. And it, it's supposed to be round, but this isn't really round. So if it is uh, needing to be reshaped, then I'll reshape it. Okay, cut each piece into quarters. I'm gonna use, you could use a knife, you could use, put it back on the cutting board. Look, you could do this. And there you go. So we're gonna cut these into triangle shapes. Okay, and I'm gonna make eight wedges. There we go, just like that. Okay, so here I have them. Hopefully you can see that. And then we are going to maybe put a little bit of this flour on at this point, just to have it less sticky. So the idea is to pick this up. Well, you wanna, we're gonna fill this now. So I'm gonna put the filling in here. So I've got a cookie sheet out and I've got my sill pad out and I'm going to load these on as we get them ready. So I have this hot pan here. I want to be really careful. So I'm going to keep one mitt on at least and I'm just going to scoop that on there. Wow. And then this is the tricky part, okay? You're going to take the two sides and press them together. Maybe this is too much filling. So, you know, this is my first time. And the filling is hot. So you want it to cool a little bit. But the idea is to make a seam with the two back pieces. Okay. And then the front piece, we're going to fold up and then just create all these different seams. So you should have more of like a triangle shape. Here it is. You've got a seam here, a seam here, and a seam here. And this is what we're gonna put on the cookie sheet. And that's what we're gonna bake. So uh, we're gonna keep going and we're gonna keep doing until all of these are done. And I like the idea of kind of pulling it off and making sure that it lifts up easily. Um, There doesn't seem to be much room to do a lot of filling, but maybe that's because of the way that I'm rolling the dough. So maybe on the next one, I would roll the dough a little thinner, but I also don't wanna roll it too thin because then it'll be flimsy and I won't be able to handle it. So this is what we're doing. And there we go. We've got, again, our triangle, right? Seam, 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 okay? Next, we're gonna lift this up, scoop some goodies out. It certainly smells good. So, there we go. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm, I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. I hope you are too. And I think it's fun that I added both the cauliflower and the potato inside, you know, um, my husband 
he is, you know, never really been exposed to cruciferous vegetables, which are amazing for you. And what is a cruciferous vegetable? It's a cauliflower and um, broccoli and cabbage. So anyways, um, I'm putting both in and I don't, I don't think he's gonna know. <laughs> so you could do that too. If you have a, a picky eater or somebody that you want to have try something, you know, these are different ways also to sneak it in and um, they'll, they won't know. So I'm taking some more. I'm gonna try to roll this one a little thinner and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the oven because it's got room on my tray um, for a few more, I think. And try it a couple times. If it comes out too thin at the edge, lift up a little bit and don't be afraid to smush it together like I did and start over. And look at this isn't a circle, right? Now I understand because I've done it with you. This isn't a circle, but I, I think it's fine. I can try to reshape it a little bit, but I'm, I just wanted it to be a little thinner. And so um, I'm just gonna do this. Let's see what this shape does. So it's not perfect. Look at that. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so let's let's grab, oh yeah, and this is thinner, so this will be interesting. Let's put a little bit of this in there. And go up the two back pieces, fold it in, squeeze, squeeze. Now here's the difference. When I made it thinner, and I don't know if it's because of the shape that I did, but this one looks a lot, a lot smaller than, say, this one, you know? So I don't know if it's the thickness or the shape, but I'm just gonna keep going with it. You know, this would be a really great, like a little appetizer to serve if you were having company or if you just wanted to serve yourself an appetizer. <laughs> okay, let me rinse my hands. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this tray. Let me give you a quick view of this. There it is. We've got some big ones. We've got some small ones. But there we go, I'm putting it in the oven. And it's all cooked at this point, so it's basically just browning it. If you're following the recipe, it says 25 to 30 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna continue with the last part of the dough and get it all ready. So I'm just gonna scrape up the end and kind of put it on our plates and get this one in the oven. And I'll be back to take that one out um, and put together a, a salad. Okay, so I, while this has been cooking, I went ahead and cleaned all the dishes and I put together a salad and I just kind of wanted to show you before the timer goes off what I put in my salad and what it looks like. So I have some power greens, which are a combination of different um, baby kale and spinach and a lot of different greens. I bought it at Costco, it's called power greens. So I chopped that up and then on top of that, I had a bunch of Napa cabbage. I cut, you know, I just had like a piece, a leftover piece. I cut that up and put it in here. And I have scallion, onion, tomato, purple um, or red as they call it, onion and carrots. And then I had a little piece of apple. I just had a little leftover piece of apple. So I cut it up, goes in the salad. And I have a little bit of beans left. So I'm gonna put those in. And so I wanted to just show you um, two different ways that you could plate this. You could, you know, I, oh, you know what else is in here I'm just seeing that I forgot? Um, red bell pepper and sugar snap peas. So, it, you know, it's just basically whatever I found. And the timer is going off, so our potatoes are done. So I will do this quickly, because we wanna get to that. So, you know, you can either just fill the bowl up and put your potatoes on the side, or you can kind of take a regular plate and we could do salad on half and potatoes on half. And let's just do that. So you can get a couple different ways to do this. 
And so for these are just um, these are organic mixed bean sprouts. They are peas and lentils. And um, I like to sprout my own, but since I didn't have any, I thought I would buy some this time. And it's the end here, so you can just do a little sprinkle of that. Um, I'll just sprinkle on one, because I don't know if Todd would like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some sunflower seeds on mine and some pumpkin seeds on both of them. And I have a little bit of avocado. I like avocado, I'm gonna slice that up. And then, you know, I usually like to buy pomegranate seeds uh, in the, you know, the whole pomegranate, but I haven't found any that are like good looking. So I found these at Costco, they're pre ready to go. And um, I'm just gonna put some of those on there, maybe a little on this one. And then I have some sauteed onions that I sauteed with just water and um, mushrooms. They're sauteed mushrooms with onion, a little bit of garlic. Let me grab a fork and a spoon. So, you know, if you were gonna have these, you could put them on the side, um, heat them up. You can mix them in the salad. I'm just gonna put it on one right now. And then here's a lemon wedge. So I'll put the lemon wedge here. And then all I have to do is squeeze it over the top when I'm ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the avocado. If you're interested to know how I care about my avocado, how I cut it and store it and all that good stuff, um, I will link the um, video that I have on all about my avocado. So for now, I'm just quickly doing a little chop, putting it on there, and there you go. Now I'm gonna take the superstar out of the oven and let's plate that. Oh man, these look amazing. And I did not check or peek on these um, when I took a break, but oh my gosh, this looks so good. <laughs> okay. So let me just uh, put this down because this is hot out of the oven. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gently, let's see. I'm just gonna gently take as many as I can want on the side of the plate or I would put a couple here. So let's just do that. So there we go, look at this, woo! Try to Got some small ones I'll put here. Oh my gosh, these look so good. <laughs> and there you go. You can add um, some other seasonings to the top of the dry seasonings if you want to your salad. Um, and then of course the lemon. And so anyways, here is our finished product. And I would even, wow, add another one there. <laughs> so now before I go sit down and eat, I want to taste this with you. I know you've been waiting, so I don't want you to wait any longer. So, oh my gosh, I am going to just, oh, it's not too bad. Okay, so let's just see. I mean, I know I could cut into it, but I wonder what it's like to just bite into it. Should we be brave? It's hot, it's hot, hot, hot. Mmm, super hot. Mmm, I'm gonna cut into it only because it's hot. When it cools a little bit, I would just bite right into this guy. Oh my goodness, here we go. All right, well there's what it looks like inside. Mmm. Wow. hot. So I don't have anything to compare it to, but it's, um, the potato is, um, very, um, I love the texture and I love how it brings out the flavors inside, but it is, um, I don't want to say bland, but it, 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 there's not a lot of flavor to the potato. So I might 
add fresh garlic next time um but i might just leave it or maybe just put a little more um if i wanted some hotness to it but you know what the inside i mean it's good and um, i will have no problem eating this and it's starting to cool off <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate our time together. Let me know if you decide to make something like this or if you have any comments, maybe you could teach me something. But I wish you guys a really great rest of your day or night and don't forget to eat your greens. Take care everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Mm. I just had to come back on. It's been an hour since I turned the camera off, um, give or take. And there's only, there's only one left. They were so good. I, I want to show you how beautiful this is. Let's just move this aside here. I mean, the crust came out beautifully on all sides and the flavor is just so good. I was hoping to save this, but I kind of want to just at least have a bite with you. And I definitely will make this again. And I don't think I'll ever make it as the recipe calls. I'll always double or triple it. <laughs> All right. Mm, I mean... It's just so magical. Really good. I mean, all those got eaten between Todd and I. Mmm. That's yummy in there. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so yummy. No, I really like it. I really do. I'll tell you, some of them tasted a little bit more red peppery flaky, and some of them I tasted more curry, and some of them were a little more bland. So maybe that means mm. Mm. maybe that means I should just play in it more, mix it up more really get my groove going. <laughs> mm. All right, well, I'll let you go. Try these, they're great. You know, you could even add kale or something in there. Oh my God, I have so many ideas for this. I better write this down.